Good morning and welcome to this week's Sunday service. Let us open our time together in prayer. Lord God, we all belong to your kingdom and we bring our different lives and experiences to worship you today, the true and living God. Amen. We sing our first hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Marjorie will now bring us our Bible reading, followed by the talk. The reading is written in Philippians, chapter 1, verses 21 to 30. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labour for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that through my being with you, again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then. Whether I come and see you, or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved, and that by God. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him, since you are going through the same struggle you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Quite a number of years ago, 
I remember being told that one day we would be a paperless society. Well, very slowly, over the years, that prophecy is becoming true. As children are more likely to receive and submit their homework via email. As we read a book on a Kindle or another tablet. Our bills and bank statements are coming to us via email rather than through the post. And we are paying for more things online. Even in recent months when we've been going into shops, we are being encouraged to use our bank cards or our mobile telephones rather than paper money. But I'm sure we all remember with fondness the ritual on holiday of writing postcards, sitting on the beach. We're having a lovely time. The weather is hot and the view from the balcony is beautiful. Tomorrow we're going on a coach trip. Hopefully we'll be back in time for happy hour. Wish you were here. Usually we would arrive home before the postcards arrived. But when we go on holiday nowadays, we usually send a text to our loved ones to say we've arrived. We will upload pictures of the holiday on Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp so that they can see the lovely holiday that we are enjoying. But there is a casualty in being a paperless society. The art of letter writing, the joy of receiving a letter. It's not quite the same when you get a quick text. Our Bible reading today comes from one of the many letters that Paul wrote. While on his missionary journeys, St Paul established a number of churches and he was always there to encourage them, even when he was in prison. We are told that death was around the corner for him and that it was not something he feared, it seemed to be something he would welcome. But he had unfinished business. He wanted to coach, to encourage, to cheer on the young church. The letter that Marjorie read from this morning was his letter to the Philippians, and in it he has a simple message. I know you're finding things difficult, and I know you've got many challenges, one of them being your own humanity. But stand firm in the spirit. Strive with one another side by side. Be of one mind and do not be intimidated by your opponents. Live a life worthy of the gospel. When the young church in Philippi received this letter, they would have read it, they would have reread it, and they would have been encouraged. There may have been times when they've thought, it's too difficult, we can't do this. But with Paul's encouragement, with his friendship, with his commitment and his love for them, they were able to soldier on and to establish the church for future generations. Well, if Paul was writing a letter to the church in Orton and Bickerstaff today, I don't think he'd say anything different. He would say, be united, work together, have courage, live a life worthy of the gospel. The church in Orton and Bickerstaff, just like the church in Philippi, has challenges. But we need to remember that we are not facing those challenges alone. We are facing those challenges together with scripture and also in the power of the Holy Spirit. Just like communication has changed over the years, the church has changed over the years, but it feels as if it's changed dramatically in recent months how we do church, how we minister to one another, how we do mission, how we worship. 
but we are in it together. The change has not been brought about by choice, but by changing circumstances we are living with today. But as a team, as a church, we can face it together and we can recognise that each one of us has a part to play. As we face the challenge of being the church, united, working together, having courage and being united in living a life worthy of the gospel. Amen. Our friendship can bring the light of Jesus' love into the lives of those in need of our support. We pray for those who need our help. May we also be inspired by the courage and bravery of those who live in poverty and hardship and learn from them how to be strong when we have to face doing difficult things. Help us to share friendship with people who live in countries where there is war. May all people live in peace. Hear us, Jesus. Help us to share friendship with those who are starving. May all people have enough to eat. Hear us, Jesus. Help us to share friendship with people who are homeless. May all people have safe and loving homes. Hear us, Jesus. Help us to share friendship with people who are sick without medicine. May all people receive medical help when they are sick. Hear us, Jesus. Help us to share friendship with people who live in poverty and are not able to go to school or work. May all people receive education and purpose. Hear us, Jesus. Christ has no body now but ours, no hands, no feet on earth but ours. It is our eyes through which he looks with compassion on this world. Christ has no body now on earth but ours. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We sing our next hymn, I cannot tell why he whom angels worship.
I'd just like to highlight one notice. In a couple of weeks we're going to celebrate harvest, but not in the traditional way. We're going to have a virtual harvest service. And so just like you sent me lots of lovely uh, pictures for the rogation service, I want some local pictures to you of uh, harvest scenes of some of the wonderful crops that uh, have been grown and the farmers and the farm workers who've worked so hard so that we're able to uh, bring in these crops. Also, a challenge for you all, I would like pictures and videos of you uh, enjoying a meal of local produce. So, go to your local farm shops, when you go to the supermarket, try and get something that has been produced more local to you, and let's see what lovely meals you enjoy using local produce. And now, we're going to sing happy birthday to a special girl, Saren, who arrived on the 17th of September. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you everyone, happy birthday to you. Thank you for sending in photographs for this week's gallery. We have more holiday snaps to look at in this week's gallery. But remember to send in uh, pictures of your activities or local scenes. Um, people love seeing familiar faces, especially when they are um, when they are not getting out as much as they once did. And if you are living in a different part of the country or the world, tell us where you are. Show us images of local scenes and even pictures of what you are doing as well. But now let us enjoy this week's gallery. We have been praying for the current situation for over six months now, but as you will see in the news, we need to continue praying, as some of us are going to be facing some more restrictions over the, the next few weeks and months. So Brenda is now going to lead us in a couple of prayers for this ongoing situation. So let us pray. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick and lift up all who are brought low, that we may find comfort knowing nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. 
God of all wholeness and healing, we thank you with all our hearts for those who are working with selfless skill and dedication to sustain our National Health Service. Grant that they may receive the resources they require to meet the demands that each day brings. Keep them safe and healthy while at work and bless their families and loved ones at home. Amen. We now sing our final hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer. Let us pray. Let us pray that God will sustain us for whatever this next week will bring. Lord, give us a way to go, a path to follow, a purpose to fulfil, and meaning to our deeds. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.